turn on the mic faster. Good morning, my name is Pastor Lewis. Uh, welcome to the Chinese Community Church Sunday worship service. Let's all stand as we begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, thanks for giving us the opportunity and the freedom, the privilege of gathering for worship, those here in person as well as those gathering later online. Thank you, Father, that we can have a special morning of worship uh, as well as sharing prayer requests and praises together as a church family. We are thankful for giving us this opportunity and we commit the entire morning to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. If you have not already done so, please silence your cell phone. We would appreciate that. Also, we have extra masks in case you forgot to bring one this morning uh, because of uh, various health conditions. Uh, the leadership has decided uh, to begin um, asking everyone to wear a mask again uh, that appears live for our worship services, the only exception being uh, the person who's standing at this podium. Uh, we appreciate your help with that. And at this time, we'll have a special announcement from Davida to uh, share about the vote from last week. This is on behalf of the consistory. Good morning. Um, as you, um, as most of you know, we had a meeting last week, um, our mid-year congregational meeting. And um, the main issue was voting on uh, whether to leave the RCA denomination. And I just wanted to share that uh, the results uh, were strongly in favor of leaving the RCA. Um, so the consistory thanks you for your support in that decision. And uh, we ask that you continue to pray for consistory as we now look at the next step of um, finding where God leads us in uh, finding a new de denomination. So again, thank you. Thanks, Davida. Uh, if you look at your printed bulletins for this morning, and I know some of you perhaps are using the new uh, e-bulletin online, and we appreciate your help with that. Um, number three, uh, there's an important announcement. Some of you are very familiar with the ACC uh, Asian Community Center, and they're, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary of service to the whole community, and uh, our church has appreciated a, a, somewhat of an informal partnership with them for many years. So we are excited about this fundraising walk that will happen on Saturday, September 17th. Ted Fong is uh, kind of uh, one of our main contacts, but um, uh, I've already signed up and we're encouraging folks that are associated with CCC in any way, our different fellowship groups and programs, uh, to consider joining in that morning. If you're not able to join personally in person to walk, you're certainly welcome to help support um, the, uh, this fundraiser and you can go uh, to this website and uh, any of us who've signed up, um, you can uh, pledge um, a, a donation uh, in, uh, in conjunction with one of us who are walking. If you wanna do it for me, that's great. Uh, I'm, I'll be helping to man one of the checkpoint tables on that walk uh, to represent CCC. Uh, various nonprofits are partnering with ACC for this event, and they're, they're giving us the opportunity to put a little sign out, you know, saying that this is a Chinese community church. I do need one or two people to join me. Uh, we have to be there by 7 a.m. that morning, so if you're interested in helping that morning, let me know as soon as possible, okay? Number four, uh, we've been announcing this for several weeks now, but we have a new fellowship, outreach fellowship that's starting up next week on August 7th, and I believe it'll take place every Sunday? In, for August. For August, okay. And uh, it's gonna be uh, pickleball, a beginning pickleball outreach. And I wasn't aware of it until recently that pickleball is now has is, is become the most popular sport in America. So uh, this is a great opportunity. Appreciate Patty and others who are helping to organize this. Uh, I think Patty said this morning there already, there's already quite a response so we're not trying to beat the bushes to get more people to come out right away because uh, there's gonna be a pretty good crowd uh, from the very beginning. I'll be sharing a brief devotional at the beginning of every one of those meetings, uh, somewhat evangelistic as well, just like we do for the ukulele and hula fellowships as well. If you want more information though, please talk to Patty right after the service. 
And then we mentioned number five, we are asking everyone to wear a mask now uh, because of uh, COVID conditions, and so we appreciate your help with that. We appreciate Carol leading worship this morning. Carol. Yeah, good morning again. Um, as you can see, we don't have our usual familiar face of Ted or Dan at the keyboard. Instead, we're welcoming Carol, who will be leading us in this morning's worship. So please stand, and we'll be starting with our first song, As the Deer. Seek ye first. It's um, a way of putting song to the scripture Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
for our final song, Jesus, Name Above All Names. Heavenly Father, we are just so blessed to be able to be here in the house of worship and just uh, being able to share and sing songs to you. And we take this time now to pray for our service of sharing. And we pray that you be with each person and maybe just take to heart how you work in our lives individually and collectively. And just thank you for the gift of your son. And we pray this all in his name. Amen. Good morning. I see God has given us another wonderful day. I'd like to thank him for that, thank him for all of our yesterdays, and thank him for any tomorrows that we may have, and hopefully he will guide us down the righteous path through them. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. A little context of that is that this is where Peter and the disciples were talking to many of the Jews and Gentiles in Jerusalem, trying to have them understand the need to repent and listen to the word of the Lord. So having said that, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. As most of you know, we've been announcing this special Sunday the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Actually, I'm hoping to maybe have um, a special Sunday of sharing and prayer together about twice a year. Uh, it's nice to have it mid, mid in the summer and then once maybe later in early December. Um, I, I was asking folks to contact me if you were planning to share something uh, just so we could uh, kind of get an idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
But um, um, if you'd like to share something this morning, please feel free to do so. It could be a praise, it could be a prayer request. Uh, if you would like um, consistory members to pray for you uh, today, like at, right after you're done sharing, we can definitely do that as well. <clears throat> Can I just see the hands, though, of those that would like to possibly share something? The light's blinding me here. If you could just raise your hand so we get some idea. There's one. Anybody else planning to share anything? The joys of having new grandchildren, perhaps? <laughs> Not to name people, but <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, okay, so just, I just saw one person raise their hand. Uh, am I missing anyone? Joseph, are you going to share briefly? Okay, Joseph. Anyone else? Okay, Matt's got a microphone in the back. Is this being recorded, Matt? Is this going to be put online? Okay, so some people may feel like what they're going to share, they'd rather not have it um, on, you know, on the recording. And so then you could just stand up uh, right where you are without the microphone and uh, speak as loudly as you can. Uh, because we, we want to respect your privacy on that, all right? Because you, you may just feel comfortable sharing uh, for those of us who are here in person, but not to have it, you know, um, on, on, online. Uh, okay? Um, all right, so let's have Grace. Would you like to share w with the microphone? Matt's coming up. Um, I want to share with my experience and every step of my ways and I lost my father-in-law. Hmm. Anyway, um, all those steps, I just feel that God was with me and with my family. And then helping hand came through Jesus Christ. And pastor was right there. And Pastor Lewis wasn't uh, our pastor. But he was right there and helped us and pray for him and pray with him. And all the things, I'm so thankful. It's like whenever I walk through those dark moments, and then I just start beginning to say, oh, Lord, why? Why did you allow that to happen? And you know what? I realize he's right there. He's just sending, send a helping hand. And he's just uh, giving me a hug. And then even though my husband is not talking, he's just very non-expressive person. But you know what? His touch and his prayer and all the things, it's just coming. And then I also want to share that my son Joshua graduated school and then all the COVID-19 through. And I'm so thankful he graduated and God gave him a job. He is still in um, what is it? internship, but I am still praying for he's going to get a permanent status. And then everything was God's blessing. And all the steps I took, and I'm so thankful. God is with us and to everybody. And all the difficult things and we are going through, and he will be there. Okay, and also, in addition, I want to talk before anybody else because I want to encourage you. Because I'm a very emotional person. That's why I don't want to talk. I just, just keep resisting. Lord, I already told you. I already told you when I was praying. But you know what? My language barriers, and I'm emotional and shy, but if I start, and everybody can do it. Everybody can share blessings and difficult times, and Jesus, and sharing his love. Thank you.
I don't usually um, uh, commonly ask for prayer requests because I, I try to be conscientious that there are those who are far less fortunate than me and might need more help. But at this time, I'm not so sure what's going to happen to me in the future. But um, just recently, I suffered from a uh, sciatica nerve displacement, which means uh, the lowest disc in my spine has uh, shifted and uh, causing painful pressure to the point that my entire le right leg is numb and uh, non-operable. So I do have surgery coming up, um, which was rescheduled to the 15th of August. And so um, don't know what the um, negative effects is going to cause, what the positive effects is going to cause, but I do I think I think uh, a prayer request would be would be very much needed at this time. Thank you. I'm going to ask any of the current consistory members who are here to join me as we pray for Joseph. <clears throat> So Stan, yeah, come on over here, Randy, Davida. <clears throat> Just touch Joseph's shoulder or back, and <clears throat> we want to commit him to the Lord right now. This has actually been going on for several months, so um, this, the surgery that Joseph just shared about is coming up in a few weeks, and we want to be able to pray for him. Okay, let's pray. Our Father God, thanks again for our brother Joseph, that you have brought him to our church family a number of years ago, that he was baptized here <clears throat> even during COVID. Thank you, Father, for his trust and his confidence in you, but we know that he has been undergoing quite a bit of pain and discomfort uh, for many months now. And we're thankful for the doctors and for the surgery that is scheduled in a few weeks, but Ultimately, Father, we commit him into your hands because you are the master healer. And Father, we pray that the surgery will be successful, that you continue to give Joseph peace and just the assurance of your presence, that he would have peace and comfort uh, and encouragement, even um, in spite of the physical pain. But Father, again, we thank you for our brother. Thank you for him sharing this morning. We commit him into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Was there someone else? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, share. Um, I do have the blessing of a grandson that was born during COVID and he's here this morning. So um, he's definitely been the joy, <laughs> joy in our lives for Richard and I, and he has a little brother on the way in, in October, so we're just um, really blessed and looking forward to that. Um, and then um, I, I also wanted to be um, acknowledge Christiana, who's here this morning. And, you know, it's always hard to believe how God works, but I remember there was one day I wasn't on worship team. I hadn't gone back up there with COVID, and we happened to sit next to each other, and I was able to befriend her, and um, it's been great knowing her, and she even came up to sing with us. So. Um, I, that wouldn't have happened if, if I was up at worship team. So it's just one way that God has worked in meeting a new friend. And, um, and then I also want to um, just ask for a prayer request on behalf of the pastoral search committee. Um, as you know, consistory kind of wears two hats, and so a lot has been focused on the RCA issue. But uh, we really um, are, first of all, grateful and blessed to have Pastor Lewis willing to extend his interim pastorship with us. Um, but um, as we try to look forward, move forward on the pastoral search, it's been um, challenging. Um, just finding resources for candidates has been um, a, a little bit of a, a hurdle. So um, please pray for God to lead us in, in those resources and finding candidates. And um, um, we, we know God has someone there. It's just a matter of some patience and, and uh, finding those resources. If anyone knows anyone, a contacts um, and can share that with us, um, we'd be grateful for that. So, um, so just a prayer request on behalf of the pastoral search committee. Thanks. Hey, 
Okay, are there any, um, other folks that are planning to share something this morning? Can I just see your hands quickly? Anyone? You don't have to come up here. Uh, Matt will bring the microphone to you. <clears throat> I'll share something, Pastor. Okay. Um, I just want to thank the church for their prayers um, for Jalen. She just recently had COVID. Um, we were traveling to LA and doing our vacation thing. And I think she caught either there or just after we got back because she's been out for two weeks. But she's back already, uh, tested negative this, this week. So she's at, back here with, with us in service. Um, also want to thank um, the Lord for keeping Chris safe while he's out school that down in LA and uh, just pray for all the blessings. Thank you. Uh, while you're thinking of something to share, <laughs> I just also would like to just praise God. I'm sure all of us are very thankful and uh, praise God for um, the two special guest speakers we've had this past month, uh, both Ryan Leong, who is doing campus ministry at UC uh, Santa Cruz, and um, uh, for uh, Keith Fong, um, Tom and Patty's oldest son, who's doing ministry down in Southern California. Uh, I unfortunately had to miss both of them because of COVID, but I did watch online and just really praise God for both of those young men and uh, for their um, commitment to serving God vocationally. Uh, we know that's a challenge for their families, but uh, their families support them 100%, which is also a real blessing. Uh, let's see, anyone else want to share? Okay, while you're still thinking <laughs> and praying about that, um, let me just share something about uh, my nephew's funeral services this past Monday. And just really appreciate all of you who were praying. Um, many of you heard that my brother, I just have one sibling, he's an older brother, he's about 14, 15 months older than I am, and um, he had four adult children. Um, my brother uh, is an engineer, his wife is a pharmacist, and um, both of them now, by the grace of God, are professing Christians. But uh, their oldest son is a um, U.S. Navy SEAL, Special Forces, for almost 20 years, and uh, he'll be retiring soon. Uh, then they have a daughter who's a doctor, and they have another son who's a lawyer, and their youngest, Jonathan, was an engineer. Uh, he did some kind of a work internship here in the Sacramento area about five, six years ago. And some of you I know may remember, he, you actually met him. Uh, he came to services a few times. Uh, he's been a Christian from um, a young age. Uh, they, I think all four kids attended um, some good churches in the San Jose area. But uh, Jonathan, <coughs> um, in recent years, especially with COVID, unfortunately uh, became very depressed as uh, many of the young adults are, are really experiencing some struggles. And unfortunately, his depression got worse and worse, and it really led more to a mental illness. And uh, he uh, it apparently took his own life. And uh, obviously, very tragic loss. Um, but this past Monday, the family had a, a, a burial ceremony uh, near um, Half Moon Bay in the afternoon. And then the evening was the celebration of life service in San Jose. So I was leading the uh, burial service, and apparently they thought it was just going to be family, mostly family, maybe a few close friends, but quite a few of Jonathan's friends from college especially showed up, uh, and I think almost all of them were Christians, and, and many of them, we gave a, an opportunity for open sharing, and a number of them shared some very, uh, very nice things that the family maybe was not aware of, you know, because many families, they don't necessarily know their adult children with their friendship and their circles, you know, what, what's really happening. And uh, one after the other was talking consistently about Jonathan's character and how caring he was. And um, so that was a very special time. And uh, what I'm most thankful for, you know, when we talk about our families and obviously uh, you've heard me share a number of times about my own family history. 
you know, having a father who immigrated from China on a government scholarship to study at MIT, got his master's, then got his PhD from the University of Michigan. He was a college professor for most of his life. And my mother, who never graduated from college, but somehow managed to become a stockbroker and became very successful in Detroit, Michigan. So my family history, you know, my brother and I grew up with uh, parents who were very successful by the world standards. And I'm thankful for that, and I'm proud of my parents. I mean, they worked hard, they were immigrants. But uh, unfortunately, uh, when they passed away, I did not have a clear sense that they, um, that they had ever trusted in Christ as their own personal Lord and Savior. So, you know, with my brother's family being very accomplished as well, uh, I'm most thankful that Jonathan, even though he was only 29 years old, that uh, I, I had real confidence in his personal faith in, in Jesus Christ, because that is more important than anything else. Uh, it is important to be successful with school and work and our families here, but ultimately, if we don't have a personal relationship with Christ, um, it's going to be like Jesus said, you know, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Um, and so, um, I, again, I deeply appreciate all of your prayers and uh, the support. Um, you know, the fact that I was just coming off of COVID, and, uh, but I had the opportunity of being there with, with my brother and his family uh, was, was pretty special. So thank you for that. Um, does anybody else like to share anything? Because I do have some other things I have prepared just in case this happened. I didn't want some record... Uh, short worship service this morning and say, oh, we're going to get out of here by 11.10, you know, it's like, um, so, I, but I, I want to really open it up for all of you. Anyone else like to share? Uh, actually, maybe to lighten it up a little bit, we didn't have the opportunity of really sharing July birthdays and anniversaries. This is the last Sunday of July, so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, do we have some, okay, no, it's a April, right? April? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> April. April, go ahead. Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm April, a hot mess. But um, I've been coming to the church now, I think, for about three, four months now. And it was just one of those things where I had, I didn't, I can't say I lost faith. I just kind of fell by the wayside. I decided, okay, I'm driving too far to go to church. I'm too tired. I don't feel like going today. So then I started praying and I said, Lord, give me some place that's closer for me that I won't have an excuse not to go and worship in your house. And he pointed me here. I don't know who it was, but someone who parked their car on that main street going this way I stopped and I said, um, is your church only for Asians? <laughs> she said, no, very well-dressed woman, by the way. I said, oh, are you non-denominational? And I forgot what she said. I said, okay. She said, why don't you just come and visit? And I said, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I came, I've been here, and I've been coming ever since. I've joined the women's Bible study. Hi, Auntie Maybell. <laughs> I love all my ladies in the Bible study. Hi, Grace. <laughs> we have a wonderful time. I can't tell you, I get up Sunday mornings, and I have to take another family to, what you call that thing? Farmer's Market out in Arden. And then I rush back home, shower, get dressed, and then I have to come to church. And I'll be told, I can't be late. Uh-uh. No, no. And if I miss, I get mad at them. <laughs> so, but I want to thank you guys for receiving me with open arms. It is just wonderful to see so many people praising the Lord and receiving all people with no issues. Thank you so much. God bless you all.
Okay. Here in, here in Fort April. <laughs> I am Baldwin. Um, <clears throat> I'm the one that brings the dog. Uh, he won't be coming anymore. Uh, he passed away last month. Uh, but I am now in uh, uh, trans uh, transition of training a new dog. So you will be seeing another puppy coming in uh, and sharing the word of God and falling asleep during pastor's sermons. <laughs> Okay, in case um, some here maybe uh, don't fully understand the whole context, um, Baldwin is a, a veteran, and uh, he's been very involved in veterans' um, uh, programs in this area, and one of the programs he helped to start was this program of having uh, therapy dogs uh, especially trained um, to help... Service dogs. Service dogs, excuse me. Yeah, that's a much higher level, service dogs. Um, to help veterans who came back from overseas who actually saw live combat, combat, right? So it's very specific. It's not any veteran. It's those who actually um, were involved in active combat. And, uh, and so uh, Baldwin's been bringing, what's the dog's name again? I, Goku. Goku. Goku, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just so bad with names. But those of us who are dog lovers, <clears throat> We're on our third yellow lab and just, you know, household pet, but he's getting near his end as well. And so we understand, uh, so I know some people who don't care for dogs or whatever, they, they think, well, why do people get so emotional, <clears throat> you know, when their dog passes away? But uh, those of us who do love dogs, we understand. And uh, Goku was not just a family pet. I mean, um, you know, he was, he was uh, a service dog. And uh, really God used uh, Goku and other dogs like that to really be a blessing and a help uh, to these veterans who uh, are coming back. And, you know, obviously, uh, well, I mean, obviously, I don't understand. I can't relate, but perhaps some of you can who, who have military background. Um, but it's a very special uh, service. And, and so um, we understand what, the, what that loss means. Uh, Baldwin, not, not only you personally, but to <clears throat> all the folks that, that, that Goku was, was really helping. Now, how many other dogs have been trained since Goku? Uh, we've, uh, well, we've had uh, a dozen. Fantastic. And now you're going to start with a new dog, you said, for training? Okay. Yeah. Uh, training now. We look forward to meeting him. <laughs> okay. Um, is, is there anyone else that would like to share? Can I see your hands? Yeah, way in the back. Hank. <clears throat> okay, here comes Matt with the macro microphone. Thank you. Uh, well, I want to share a blessing to me. As you know, uh, my son Peter has been gone for about nine years. Uh, he went to med school back in the area of Pennsylvania and spent his uh, residency there, and uh, now they have two grandchildren, so we haven't seen them for maybe once or twice in the last nine years. And starting next week, uh, uh, the family's coming home. Uh, they have a house here in Sacramento now, and he will be opening up his practice uh, locally. Uh, my my daughter-in-law and the two grandkids will be here next week, but Peter will go back for another a month to finish up his uh, contract with the hospital. So after nine years, we'll have the family back together. Thank you. What a blessing to hear that, Hank. Uh, we just rejoice with you and, your, and, uh, and Dee, certainly, um, to have two grandchildren and, and have them that far away. and. I've only seen them a couple of times. Wow. To have them this close, what a blessing. Okay, anyone else like to share? Yes, right up front here with Terry. Good morning again. Um, reflecting on a couple of things, I remember 
April's, what she said. I met April the first day she came here. Right here, for some reason, she avoids me now. <laughs> but I like you anyway. <laughs> April's experience with coming here was very similar to my and Jan's experience. We came in through the basketball program with our grandson. And much like April said, the first day we walked into this church, we felt like we had been here forever. Very welcoming, very open-armed. Uh, Everybody is and was welcome here. As many of you may know, uh, Jan was diagnosed about five years ago with Parkinson's disease. And the blessing to that, if there is such a thing, is that it has not progressed over a five-year period. She has pretty well stayed at a level place. Uh, gradual little things that disappeared that she could do before. Uh, she's not here today because she's feeling a little lightheaded, which is one of the symptoms that she deals with. But it is a blessing that she has not progressed because it's not the usual case with Parkinson's. And I thank God for that. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> okay, anyone else would like to share? <laughs> Come on. All right, I, I do have some other things to share, but uh, yeah, right up front, Gordon. Well, uh, we're really happy to be here today. Uh, nine of us went down and had a great time in Disneyland. Five of us came down with COVID, so it wasn't that much fun afterwards, but we had a great time. And I'm happy to say that all five are had a, a mild case of COVID, and we're all recovering very well. Um, we're lucky because it could have been worse. Four of the, the members that was from New York, Michelle and her boys, they all had COVID in January. So even though all five of us got it, they were invincible. So once you have COVID, you do develop antibodies and it does protect you. So the earlier vaccine and boosters are only for the earlier version. And in the variant, you're not quite protected. So I agree, policy, masks and social distancing is extremely important. So a lot of people think that it's all over, but it's not. It's gonna be around for a long time, just like the flu. You probably have to get a they shop once a year, once they get on track to make the vaccine, the booster, to cover the variant. So in the meantime, enjoy yourself, keep safe, wear your mask, social distancing, and uh, pray to God to keep us all healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, anyone else? Right over front here. Good morning. Um, I'm Christiana. For those that don't know me, sorry, I'm a little emotional today, but uh, but God's greater than whatever we're going through. So I said, you know what? I was hesitating all morning, but I'm gonna go ahead and speak because I love God. I love this church, um, and echoing everyone that's new. I'm also. Um, fairly new and was very um, warmly welcomed from day one, especially Davida, who I used to work with. And um, so, um, what do I want to say? I have a prayer request because. Uh, it's hard to speak about, but um, I think a lot of us in here have worked in healthcare or still work in healthcare, and I'm also one of those people. Um, and actually, I'm pretty burnt out. Uh, 
because um, I've had to work the front lines from where it began here in, in the US, in Kirkland, Washington. And it was very traumatic, um, but I was able to leave there, come here, I'm still working in healthcare, but I'm ready for a change. And I need prayer for being able to, to work in a different field. Um, and because um, I know God has other plans for me, I have other gifts to offer, and I'm excited about that, but it's a very difficult time to, um, to work in right now. Um, uh, but God's greater than all the things that we go through. God's greater than all the pains that we've had, all the suffering, all the difficulties of this world, um, just to live life. So I praise God for that. And I thank um, everyone in here for being so welcoming and um, it gives me strength, so thank you. Um, I, I think it's such a praise to God that, you know, God brings new folks to the church family and uh, having April and Christiana, you know, being two of the newest and he, having both of them share about just feeling very loved and accepted um, and warmly received. Uh, that's something that has been a characteristic of this church for, for many, many years and something that um, I, I've mentioned a number of times. And I know those of you who grew up in this church and you may think, well, that's just the way church is supposed to be. And, and in a sense, you're right. But unfortunately, there's so many churches that, that are not nearly as loving and accepting as this one. And so this is a very special blessing. Um, Christiana, is it okay if, if we pray for you right now? Good. Can, I, can I have the current consistory members join me again, please, as we pray for Christiana? Just come on up here. And maybe, um, Davida, maybe you could lead us, okay? <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just um, are so blessed to have our sister Christiana here. And thank you for her sharing and um, her reaching out to us. And so we pray that um, you give her strength and patience and just help lead the way for her to find the path that you have designed for her. And maybe just all be encouraging and loving and supportive in any way that we can. So we lift this all up to you um, because we know that, um, as she said, you are greater than all things and um, that you will be the answer. So we give this to you and pray this in your son's name. Amen. Okay, let's just, uh, let's have another quick word of prayer and just thank God for all of our, uh, the first responders and the uh, caregivers. Okay, so let's, let's pray. Father God, we're so thankful for the many men and women around the world who during this pandemic, while some of us got sick and just hunkered down in our own homes, they so bravely and courageously continued to serve and to help those who were sick and to risk the, the danger to themselves personally as well as their loved ones. And we're so thankful for Christiana and so many others who've been taking that risk for all these years. And we know many are burned out and just really uh, overwhelmed because of uh, just the uh, just the difficulties they faced and the trials and the uh, just the challenges <coughs> excuse me and the hardships as a father we just pray that you'll uh, continue to energize and just revive each one thank you so much for their service we pray that we'll be thankful express that gratitude when we have encounters with with them uh, in their line of work and that we'll be able to just say a little word of thank you and remember them in our prayers. And so, Father, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, who's next to share? Anyone else? Where's Matt? Okay. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, anyone else? 
I know, you're looking at your watch just thinking, okay, we're, we're getting close enough, we can, we can wrap this up. <laughs> so, okay. uh, all right, Michael. Okay. Morning, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about, since we're talking about COVID, um, and it has been hard on a lot of people, um, but I have to say that uh, there's been a silver lining in, in it for our it's been a, there's been a silver lining in it for our family, and so I'll share about the blessings of COVID. Um, so this happened two years ago, and uh, you know my, my wife and I had, you know, Tiffany was away at school, and Jeremy was away at work in the Bay Area, and then COVID hit, and so the family got together, and it was an opportunity to get to know our young adult children um, in a different way. You know, we sent them away to college and to work and things and, as uh, little kids, and they came back as young adults and with their own minds, and it was such a blessing to be able to get to know them in this way, and so we're still enjoying that right now. <clears throat> um, this two years has been pretty eventful in our family. Our, our daughter just finished up her master's program in pharmaceutical science, and she just started medical school last week. And uh, uh, Jeremy um, had the opportunity to go to Japan and Korea. Um, just got back from a month in Japan, so we're thankful for safe travels um, back for him. And uh, during this time, too, I also had the chance, and I will be finishing up my, uh, my schooling as well. I took two years uh, to do uh, an MBA, so uh, thank God for that as well. And uh, I look forward to being able to spend a little bit more time at church with you all. Um, now that uh, that obligation is soon ending. So thanks, uh, thanks to God for the many blessings, blessings of family and uh, the blessing of COVID in that way and uh, for opportunities that uh, he always puts before us and pray that, uh, you know, that everything that we do, um, all the opportunities that we have might be glorifying to him. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> All right, well, time for one more. How about one more? Okay, I'll hand the microphone back to... I'll go back up. Thank you so much for each of you who shared and uh, just for the praises and prayer requests that we could share as a church family. Uh, let me just mention some things from Acts chapter 2 that uh, Terry read for us earlier. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, talking about the early church. And we all understand that from church history that that was such a powerful, spiritually powerful uh, group of believers in the early church. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now, in the English, it might appear that uh, what they devoted themselves to were four things. You know, the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, which is communion, and prayer. But actually, in the original language, it becomes much clearer that what they actually devoted themselves to were the first two items. The apostles' teaching, which is the word of God, and to the fellowship. And then fellowship is expanded and it mentions two examples of fellowship, communion and prayer. Certainly not the only expressions of spiritual fellowship, but two very, uh, very uh, powerful examples of what spiritual fellowship is. It's not just getting together for social interaction and talk about the weather and sports or whatever, although that's fine, that's a part of just getting to know people. But spiritual fellowship, sharing in our relationship to Jesus Christ, Communion and prayer are two of the most uh, powerful examples of that kind of sharing, that kind of fellowship. And that word for fellowship is in the original language is koinonia, which many of us have heard before. So they devoted themselves to these two things, the apostles' teaching, which is the word of God, and to the fellowship in the body of Christ. And that has many expressions. But what, what has happened recently here at CCC, you know, we've been talking a lot about this vote, you know, and about possibly leaving the RCA and things, and, and, I, and as we've been trying to make it clear, it's not about one particular issue. 
It really is about our commitment to the Word of God. And that's something that we need to live out. And I think this church does so well, especially in terms of fellowship, you know, sharing our life, our, our relationship in Jesus Christ. Uh, that's a horizontal experience. But the vertical relationship to really have a commitment to God and his word is so important. If we begin to, in a sense, fudge on our beliefs about what, what God's word is teaching, uh, and then our whole attitude towards the word of God starts to decline, then basically this church could be called the Chinese Community Center rather than Chinese Community Church. And so that's why um, you know we've done quite a bit of discussion and prayer and I appreciate again all of you who were voting, <clears throat> but as was announced earlier, the vote was uh, pretty overwhelmingly in favor of leaving DRC. I mean, we realize how difficult that is for some, especially because of the emotional attachment. We've been with DRC for a long time, but as we'll continue to make announcements as the consistory discusses what new denomination are we headed toward, as I mentioned earlier, the denomination that we're leaning toward right now is called the Alliance of Reformed Churches, the ARC. The ARC was formed very recently, just the last couple of years, created mainly by conservative churches that came out of the RCA and created this whole new denomination called the ARC. Uh, the sim the, everything they believe and, and stand for, very much like the RCA, years ago, until more recent, in recent years, when they started to have some, some difference of opinion about things. But it basically is kind of like, in a sense, you know, some people think we're leaving the RCA and joining this new thing. It's really like we're just going back to the old RCA. I mean, that's basically it with, with a new label. But again, be praying for the consistory. We have more discussions about, uh, you know, what new denomination to join. Um, you know, but I think, as I said, we're kind of leaning towards the ARC, and hopefully that decision will be made very soon. We'll be making announcements about that when we have those decisions made, okay? All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up now. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, we're very thankful for everyone who shared this morning. Um, I, I think it's such a special blessing to be able to hear people share praises as well as prayer requests. Uh, and, you know, that's what fellowship, this fellowship in Acts 2 is really talking about, sharing our unity and our harmony in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this time, um, I'm just going to have a prayer for uh, the offering, which, again, just a reminder of how much uh, God has blessed this church. So many faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, even through COVID, even if they couldn't be here in person, but continue to... Uh, send their, um, their tithes and offerings uh, so faithfully that the ministry of this church would continue as well as the ministry through our missionaries around the world. Okay, so let's just pray at this time. This is the offering prayer. Father God, thanks again for uh, all the brothers and sisters who have continued uh, to be stewards of the money that you have blessed us with and faithfully uh, providing tithes and offerings so that the ministry of this church would continue and uh, progress even in new programs for outreach and uh, through our missionaries around the world. And so Father, we're thankful uh, for their generosity, for their faithfulness. And we pray that these funds would continue to be used uh, for your honor and glory and to further your kingdom work around the world. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Now the pastoral prayer, um, just remembering to pray for those who uh, have physical challenges, especially our dear sister Charlene. Um, she was able to go home. Uh, she had some difficulties as a result of cancer treatments, but um, uh, she, you know, she, we just let's continue to pray for God's healing. Uh, the prognosis is still very positive in, in her situation, uh, but she's not able to be here obviously this morning. So let's continue to pray for her, as well as others who uh, have COVID or are recovering from COVID. Um, we're so thankful for <clears throat> God's protection and his care and uh, the encouragement that he brings. And for those who have lost loved ones, again, we're so thankful for the church family, um, praying for one another and uh, offering different expressions of support and encouragement. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, thanks so much for the opportunities you give us to gather for worship and for fellowship. Thank you for everyone who could be here in person, as well as those who might be watching online later today. And Father, thank you for this time of sharing, because brothers and sisters in Christ, we know sometimes it's a, it's a real struggle uh, to be able to stand up and to um, share in front of people. We know public speaking is, uh, is, um, is, is scary for many. And so I just really thank you for all the brothers and sisters who shared this morning. Thank you for the different praises as we praise you together, as well as prayer requests and the sharing of needs, because you tell us in your word that uh, we're to share one another's burdens, that that's so much a part of what it means to be a part of the family of God. Uh, but Father, it's hard to share that burden with those who perhaps hesitate uh, to make those burdens known. And so we know that there are other burdens that have been unshared today, and we pray that um, you would just provide um, each one with the means and the way to share that, would, uh, that they'd be comfortable with, but also maybe stretch their faith a little bit and uh, to receive prayer support and encouragement uh, in every possible way from the church family. And Father God, thank you that we can trust you with, with those who have physical challenges. Uh, we think of our dear sister Charlene as she uh, continues um, cancer treatments. Thank you that she has returned home uh, even though she's using a walker, uh, we do pray that the treatments uh, would be successful, that you would continue to give her encouragement and comfort. <clears throat> and for those struggling with COVID still, again, we, we pray for your protection and for your healing. We pray for our brother Joseph as he faces uh, back surgery in a couple of weeks. And Father, for each one who needs special encouragement, um, and just direction and guidance as they uh, go through this whole uh, uh, pandemic and just the different struggles that that has created in terms of employment, in terms of school, uh, family relationships. Father God, just, we just continue to lift those up before you. And we rejoice again with good news from families uh, for Hank and, and Dee as their son and his family will be returning to this area. We're so thankful for that. <clears throat> And we're thankful for children and grandchildren and how you bless us in so many ways and uh, as we have opportunities of, of gathering with them, <clears throat> we pray that <clears throat> we'll always be thankful to you and not take that for granted. And Father, thank you again for all the various programs uh, and ministries of this church. Uh, the uh, basketball program that is um, seeking to start back up again this fall. And we pray that uh, you'll just be with those leaders and their basketball uh, program board members as they uh, wrestle with some of these challenges. But we know what, that you use the basketball program to bless so many kids and their families, especially with COVID, that it would be such uh, uh, just a, a, an uplift. And so we pray that that uh, would work out for this fall if possible. And for this new uh, outreach uh, program as well for uh, pickleball, and it's starting here at this church next Sunday, uh, and every Sunday through August. We pray that that would be a wonderful time of sharing together. Uh, just an opportunity, again, for us to reach out to the community, those who are not, um, th they don't have a regular place of worship, that we could share about the love of Jesus Christ with them as well. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. We give you praise and thanks uh, for all the sharing and the prayers and the praises together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see. Let's uh, please please join us for our closing song, "I Love You, Lord." Um, please stand.
just remain standing for closing prayer. <clears throat> and I'm just thankful again for Carol and uh, the worship team uh, leading us in worship today. Um, those of us who've been here for a while, I think it's easy to take them for granted. But, you know, every time I arrive, I try to arrive here early uh, each Sunday morning. Um, uh, many times they're here before I am. And, you know, they, they come, I think about, was it, 9 o'clock you guys gather? Or what, what time? 9 o'clock. Uh, for worship practice and rehearsal and so just really appreciate all of them as well as those who help with the video and the sound uh, there's that Jonathan in the back and uh, who else is helping today Matt is it is Chris and Jalen yes. helping too Chris and Jalen so appreciate them so um, uh, we do have individually wrapped snacks available on the table as you exit today so help yourself to those and so let's close in prayer Father God, thanks again for this morning of worship and fellowship. It's been so good to hear from brothers and sisters in Christ sharing from their hearts um, your goodness, your grace, as well as uh, certain needs that we can pray with them and for them. Father, thank you for your many blessings on this church family, and uh, we, want, we don't want to take any of those for granted. I thank you for the worship team. Thank you for Carol leading today. And thank you, Father, for giving us, again, the freedom that we, that we so often take for granted to gather for worship. So we give you all the praise and thanks, and we ask you to dismiss us now with your blessing. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.